what's going right now. Well, welcome everybody to Storm King's Thunder episode like 42? 43. 43? Uh, if we have any viewers, I don't know. Uh, ever. To the aliens in the future who decode and download it and study our civilization by watching YouTube videos. Uh, I Welcome hope everyone. Thoroughly confused. Mm. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Hello, hello, future. Uh, I understand this is confusing, but just bear with us, all right? <laughs> we'll burn um, the house down eventually. We're currently playing games. <laughs> uh, you guys had done your a run about in the savage frontier of the Forgotten Realms, visiting and plundering Uthgar barbarian tribal mounds, which is okay because for the most part they're somewhat evil. So a little bit, a little bit of sacrilege. They kind of deserve it, I guess. I don't know. It's, uh. Future archaeologists will be pissed about the temple or about the plundering. Mm -hmm. You guys had recovered a bunch of uh, giant artifacts and returned them to the Anon Eye of the All Father Temple. Question. Yes. Do we hit ninth level? Do you know what? Or you do not. Start, okay, starting. A new that's, that's okay. No, because I know I was. <laughs> we went ninth level. The thing is, is between you guys getting from like Bridge Shander to like the Eye of the All Father. Yeah. That technically, in the book, technically that's all seventh level. Oh wow! <laughs> so, because. <laughs> Anyways, because it's milestone, right? Yeah, yeah, so I'm okay. It's just, yeah, one. it's just no, don't uh, it, it. It could have been balanced better, yeah. but like right now, technically, you guys should only be seventh. But oh. I like, I like, got antsy and made you guys eighth earlier. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um. Actually, actually no. Actually, no. Do it. That's what it was. That's you just asked me. That's where you guys were supposed to turn eighth. Oh, that's right. what it was. Supposed yeah. to turn eighth. Yeah. But then look, and then this next level is fast. You guys would have went eight nine like bam bam. It would have been like seven forever. Anyways, whatever. No, you guys are not. Um. You guys. Uh, All right, level nine. Nine. Eight. Eight. As you guys, like you guys brought the, return the relics to the Eye of the Allfather temple, like the uh, Oracle. When you guys place the relics in the circle, uh, boss reliefs of uh, different giant lords appeared. Three lords. The Frost Giant Lord Lord Storvald, uh, uh, Countess Zandri, or whatever her name was, the uh, uh, cloud giant one, with where she was wearing like a maniacal looking mask, holding torture tools, and the third one, Ga, Ga, beast, hill giant who wants to seek top of the ordning simply by being the largest. <laughs> Food is her meanness. Yeah. Gluttony and everything is her whatever. And you guys had actually heard of her in Yeah, we have. And uh, when you guys chose her, the oracle filled you guys with like uh instinctual directions as to where you can go to locate her. Mm -hmm. The reason you were to 
bring down these storm giant lords or one of these storm giant lords is that these lords have uh, magical conks. These magical conks were given to them by King Hecaton, the missing storm giant. So, uh, question. Uh, we met another hill giant. Uh, yes, a female hill she giant. She was the one that. Um, she was the one that told us about Gaul, right? Yes. Did we? Did we kill her? No. No. Uh, do we want to like sit in the message chair see if she wants to help? <laughs> you can, but remember she was born to try to kill us after like you know, a minute or so, so I just don't know how much help she would be. Hill giants are pretty unstable, yeah. 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 Like, not when they're not working with other giants, yeah. Like, they want to be boss or eat you. So, I mean, it's up to you guys. I'm not, but, yeah. But Michael is right. Like, she was, like, pretty erratic. She would forget even why you guys were around. Yeah. She was just like, Arr, what are you here for? Get in my belly. I'm like, okay, never mind, you know? Yeah, like Homer Simpson. Who are you? We're going to help you. Help you with what? Getting your husband. It's a long walk. Okay, I'm hungry. And she's like, I'm going to eat you. No, 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 we're helping you. Do what? <laughs> Get your husband. Oh, yeah. Where is he? He's far away. Oh, it's a long walk. I'm hungry. I'm going to eat you. Oh, we're helping you. So on, so forth. That's pretty much what it was. That's honest to God, pretty much what it was. Like, <clears throat> so you guys chose God. You instinctually know of her whereabouts. Um, when you guys were in Golden Fields, you guys kind of went northwest from Golden Fields. She's northeast of Golden Fields. Okay. So you guys are traveling kind of uh, north by, or uh. Hey, we could go but, back uh, to Golden Fields, pick up the wagon. You could then go then to Golden Fields first, or you could go there first, because it's yeah, like uh, you guys, you guys would pretty much have to go uh, east by southeast to okay. get to God now. You guys instinctually kind of know that she's on a tributary of the Deserin River, which is like a huge, massive river that runs through a huge, massive valley throughout the north, right? It's almost like a diagonal Mississippi, right? It's just a main thing. She's on one of those tributaries. Let's roll for the weather today. Who wants to begin rolling me some dry dye 20? Bonjour. I can. Okay, Kath. Uh, roll me d20 oh. for the temperature. Got 14. It is average temperature. So, uh, Cold. Cold, <laughs> winter cold, but not like extreme cold. Let's roll for the wind, please. Ooh, one. There's no wind. It's very calm. Uh -huh. Let's roll for precipitation. One more roll. Never roll? Three. Oh, no precipitation. So, oh. it's, you know, typical weather, calm, no precipitation. You guys are making good time. Just a soft chop of the propeller being turned by the elemental. You guys are doing a full eight miles an hour. Woohoo! Uh, which is pretty fast. Yeah, the sailing ship is only I'm like three miles. Yeah. Right. 
you guys have a you know e it's easy to find the Desert and Valley the Desert Valley Desert River. You guys found that. You guys follow it down. You can see the high forest way in the distance. And uh, we we guys uh find the tributary tri tributary. Like it's winter time, there's still snow, but the rivers aren't frozen yet, especially the desert because it's so big. The tributary is quite large, and it and it even look and it looks swollen. Uh, so it hasn't frozen either because although it's a tributary, it and I say it looks swollen because you can see we're like on the banks, you can see where trees are. Like the tops of trees, like it's it's submerged. How high off the ground are you guys flying? Do you guys have a preferred height? At the moment, I'm just what I'm. Let's go pretty high, just to keep necessarily people from being freaked out on the uh, surface. Also, Definitely. I uh, also I rock throwing range. <laughs> Yeah, definitely out of out of you know bow shot high or or rock throwing high. You know? So what, like a thousand feet? Uh, still, a, yeah, I think it's like six hundred is longbow, right? Yeah, yeah, so over six hundred. Even though I don't think a longbow six hundred feet, you know, straight up sounds a little excessive, but yeah. Well, D and D, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's like fifth edition D and D. I'm sure we could really refer back to older editions. <laughs> give us a formula. Yeah, I will say I can do that with my behind my back, one handed. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we would probably like you know half the range straight up or however weird they would do it. Um, okay. Um, I want to make you guys roll perception because you guys will see them. The river below in the distance, you can see a couple dark shapes on the surface of the river. What do you get? Wow, they got to be big. Garl notices that they're very geometrical. There's two dark squares. He, call, he, he calls the, you know, the sighting you guys kind of get a little bit closer, bring it in. Garl, you could see, the others could see these two dark square shapes on the surface of the river from the height or whatever. And maybe some of you can see figures like men. But Garl, you could see that there's two rafts, two large rafts with several figures. And by the uh, the fact that there's like like in fact the guys will bring it in just a little bit uh, like like the fact that there's like great axes leaning and stuff like that you're pretty sure that it looks like there's a couple rafts of orcs they've got like and I'm I'm talking like big rafts, right? Like yeah, you know, twenty feet by thirty feet, like it, like logs lashed together into these big rafts like floating on this swollen river. A war barge. And uh, you know, there there looks like that there's uh, at least a dozen figures as you know with their weapons wrapped up and you know bundled up in furs. You can see as you guys kind of put in a little bit closer because they, of course. Uh, notice you as well. Like there's no hiding a massive hot air balloon with with a ship dangling underneath it in a clear sky. And you could see that like piled on the rafts, you could see piled like cordwood is uh, looks appears to be like stacks of frozen fish. And on uh, one of the rafts, you could see that because, like, 
the orcs all appear to be like standing or walking around or even, you know, there's a couple with poles, but they're not doing much. They're just letting, letting it drift. Right. Uh, uh, you could see that there appears to be some figures like sitting on the, on the, the, the rafts. Basically it looks like that they have some prisoners that oh. are clustered together. It uh, there's only appears to be three of them, but the orcs there looks like that there you know could be even be up to a dozen spread out on the two rafts. The prisoners are on one of the rafts, and they're do, just. Do any of them look like they're goblins or uh, gnomes? The prisoners. Yes. Uh no, they they look like to be like uh <clears throat> like they were kind of like they're very ruggedly dressed. They look like woodsmen or fishermen or hunters or like they're they're not in like a city garb or a farmer garb and they look like just to be like humans that do any of them look female? Uh, <laughs> roll a d20. Yeah, asking okay. the important questions. Well, hey, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to work an angle here. <laughs> In fact, roll me a d20. Roll, and roll, we'll roll it three times for me, please. All right. The first one is a 13. Okay. The second one is an 11. Okay. And the third one is a 2. Uh, as far as you can tell, it actually looks like two of them. Hey, guys. One for sure. One for sure is female, and the other one you think might be. It's hard to okay. tell. Okay. Hey, guys. You think we ought to save them? I think there's prospects down there to to make things better for us. Uh, oh, sure. Why not? Sure. Oh, I don't see why not. Right. Hey, fellas, take us lower. Do, yes, we do. We just like do the, the orcs look to have any uh, range and weapons. He gives, and he gives you like the. Chest. And do and do 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 we have voices on this ship? Or yeah. guns or whatever. The, the rear, the rear has a swiveling ballista. The front has a harpoon gun. Which, awesome. mechanically speaking, works exactly the same as a ballista, although you can tie off the harpoon. Like, you know what I mean? You can connect it to a rope. And it's a spring-loaded harpoon gun. It's not a bow launch or crossbow ballista thing. That's on the back. There's a ballista on the rear, a thing on the front. If you want, if you want to use the ballista or, and or crossbow, I'll just explain how it works quickly. We will still have to look it up because I don't remember what the attack is on it and range. But it my, takes my, it takes one action. To, is it, in, so probably not me. I don't think it matters who shoots it. I think that the siege weapon has its own attack roll, like bonus. Oh, okay. But we'll look it up if we if if it comes down to it. But this, I just want to explain this. It takes. One action to load it, one action to aim it, one action to fire it. So three people can do it in a round. Correct, Michael. Three rounds. There are cultists to help you. There are Gobbo and 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 uh, uh, Warvel as well. So if someone wanted to command like the front harpoon, uh, Gobbo and Warvel could help you, or two of the cultists could help you, but that is the way it works. I just wanted to explain it that because it is unwieldy one to load, one to aim, one to fire. One right. Action. One okay. action to load, one action to aim, one action to fire. Okay, well, let's, let's do it, guys. You know, oh. boy, boy, sorry. It's not bad idea, but at the same time, maybe instead of just like raining down death upon them, like, you know, just going down low enough to where we can. You know, shoot them with crossbows and hope that their hand axes won't reach us, which they probably ought not to. Instead, let us work upon 
an idea of just swooping down and rescuing said fair maiden and any barrels of ale they might have a, uh, uh, oh. on their ship. Why oh, do you think they were going to be better? her? Yes, that's an excellent idea, Nicodemus. We stealth in, sneaky, sneaky. And well, I, I, we I, I, come I, I, out the hero. They've, they've already seen us, right? <laughs> It's a oh, clear yeah, day. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, we already rolled. It's a clear day. There's no, there's no getting. Yeah. I, I don't think we can sneak up in an airship. Well, <laughs> no, you can. Even, you can even see that you know that they're like motioning and pointing, and you know they're kind of ready weapons, and you can see they even have like javelins in their hands. But we fly 120 out. feet is maximum javelin range. We fly out guys, high. We oh, could okay. easily, we could easily be out of range of these things. And we've My got gravity on our side. Has a maximum range of 320 feet. Oh. Of course, that's also a long range. But so we, we, uh, Garl said, What is my call? We fly on 320 by. 20 feet. No, no, no. But, but range of what? What is that the range of? Light crossbow. Light yeah. crossbow, 320. Uh huh. Well, what, so what's the short range on it? Uh, 80. 80, 320. Yeah. So we could yeah. get low enough to where I don't have disadvantage, and they probably still would have disadvantage throwing their things, but we could hit each other. Or we could go high enough to where I'm at disadvantage, and they have no shot at all of shooting us back at all. We just sit there and peg them until they run into the woods and hiding. Well, but if they do that, they may take their prisoners with them. Yeah, that's actually true as well. So, uh, is there a way that we could, like, we have ropes, right? Rope ladders yeah. and such like that? What if I? You uh, on a the ship? They're called lines. I'm I I am willing to go down there. I'm a, I'm a melee yeah. character, right? I'm mm -hmm. I, yeah. I can I can go down there. Except what if we go down? And uh, oh oh oh! I love this one. All right, we swing down there. We drop me and him off, like as we're, we're we go ahead and go follow the line down as far as it'll go. And so when the ship comes swinging by, we can just drop the final few feet onto the ship where the women are, or the, the prisoners are. Yeah. <laughs> and then I turn him into a giant gorilla. And he can just pick the people up and put them on the airship. Huh? The huh? airship does float too. Huh? I could disorientate uh, the enemy first. I've got synaptic sat static. Only problem is it might hit the people we're trying to save. Oh, well, it's an area effect, so you just you just be very careful about not getting anywhere near there, right? Even if you you know don't get as many orcs as possible. Okay, I think it's a range of 120 feet. Yeah, what's the area of effect? Area of effect, uh, uh, 20 foot r radius. Is it synaptic? Isn't synaptic static a fifth level spell, though? You shouldn't have that, right? I thought we were bumped up to ninth level, weren't we? No, no, no. no I said eight. <laughs> we are ah, eight. Okay. So don't worry about Scratch that. Out, then. <laughs> well, what do you think about that? I turn you into a giant ape <clears throat> and you just pick the girls up and place them and then. And then we grab the lines and run off again. Just like, fuck you guys. And just leave the orders. We could, we could maybe fire a harpoon into the, uh, into the ground as a backup. Uh, as a backup part in case we, um, we, uh, the uh, robot gets a uh, car or whatever. Not to mention the weight of a fucking King Kong standing on one of these rafts may be enough to sink. Yeah. yeah. Huh? Huh? Why don't you turn... Could you turn the goblin into a, um... I cannot. Okay. So it'd have to be me. Okay. Well, it wouldn't have to be you. It could be Garl. I could turn him to um, a... Um... Oh, never a, mind. A giant-sized gnome. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> if I do, can... <clears throat> well, so, uh... So, uh, I d I've not really used polymorph for a while. Um... I could use silence. I, I could turn silence into one. I could turn... You know, I could turn myself into one. I could turn myself into a 25 foot tall if, party. It's animal. like, question I here, right? I've never really used 
Polywalk, if I turn into it, would I still have my class features? Like, um, because I do D12 plus 2D8 damage with my axe right now. Well, you would do more with your fists. But the point is not necessarily yeah. to kill them. It is to rescue the women. Yeah. And I'll have your back with my okay, mighty okay, bow. Fuck it, why not? This may be fun. Even, even if it doesn't work. In which case, I'll stay on the ship. <laughs> In which case, we'll just throw you down on the line. And I'll stay on the ship. Okay? Yeah, fuck it. I, why not, right? And we'll girl, just our, at... Hold, have we can throw down a hypnotic left? pattern to keep some of them busy. Well, I'm sure you can, yeah. They're on, they're on rafts. Right? Have if we we're lucky, we might cause them to fall over into the river. Yeah. Let yeah. me grab. You know, I, I, might even, I might have even underestimated the rafts, right? Like the rafts might, might be a little bit bigger. It might be like 30 by 40. Like they're big, bargy, like rafts, right? Of, uh, like, you know, of lashed together logs. Like they're not super fancy because wow. so they look durable, but. I'm. I'm only I'm only one point of intelligence more intelligent than a giant ape. Like my intelligence is eight, well, the giant ape intelligence is seven. Yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. well, lucky brain. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, damn. I sorry, I'm just looking at the stats because I'm gonna be I'm gonna be an ape in a second, so I need to know what the character sheet is. Mm. Uh, I just need one question answered before we do this. Have we rested since? Uh, oh yeah, rested? yeah. You guys are fully rested for sure, because right. it would have, it probably would have been like a couple days travel or something. Even uh, like twenty four hours a day would have been like at least a, at least a couple days. You guys have actually come quite a bit south. <laughs> like you'd like well, the oracles well, yeah. in the spine of the world mountains, and you guys are, yeah. It, it, it's <laughs> been several. It's been several days, and you know probably. Okay, I was just looking at my spell list, and I was like, "Holy oh, shit, I used both my fourth level spells last no, no, time. No. Yeah, <laughs> I, uh, sorry sorry for not having had explained that, but yeah, yeah, it's been ah. several days. Giant Ape so big. Um, I, I'm going to stay on the ship. We must be at least 60 feet. I must be what, at least within 60 feet of him, though. Yeah. I'm going to turn you into a boat. Sure, uh... Into a giant. So, like, um, the, I've got, like, the giant has got a 40 foot movement speed, right? So I could be almost down to the end of the ladder like, before you, uh, before we even come in range. So you could, you could be 40 feet up and then, um, cast it, uh, and then if I'm 40 feet from the back of the ladder, I could jump, right? It's got a decent amount of hit points. Oh, that's all. I'm just going to say that when we first drop him off, tell the people that when we first drop him off, the, the, the dragon cultists, you must be at least no more than 60 feet above where he lands. Yep. Well, he nods. He says, I could do that, but... Um, and then you can rise. Then you can rise. You can go high. <clears throat> <laughs> Until things go bad. I... Yeah, just... I... Curious here, uh, Dragon Cultist guy. Uh, we should give them names like uh, Star Trek Enterprise people or something, like the captain. You know, uh, they be... they do have names, but yeah, I probably shared them, uh, before, but I can't. I I'm terrible at remembering names. So I, uh, one one more question: Can I still be concentrating on a spell when I turn to a giant ape? Yes, you just cannot yes. cast a spell before you. <laughs> well, I, I talked like the cultist. <laughs> I see then. How, hot, how fast is you know, this thing? Uh, you know what? You know what would be cool? You know what would be cool? A giant ape with spirit guardians around him. That would be cool. You can do that. I will delay. I will ready an action if we're in initiative or something. If I beat you, I will ready the action until I see that. You can maintain concentration while an ape. You just cannot cast it as an ape. At least awesome. that's my understanding. I mean, that's we got, that, we got um, good. We got decent. We got decent point here. This is gonna be great. All right. And how 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 fast can this ship ascend and descend? Pardon me. 
how fast can the ship ascend and descend? Like if I if I like when we oh when no we I, I, I I I get what you're saying. I'll I'll can I um, give the order to raise it so we go up high? I'm sure you can. Like Colter, all you have to do is worry about is up, down, yada yada. The last thing I world I want, I want this balloon to be like whacked off by a, or get a hole in into it due to a, you know an errant hand axe or javelin or what have you. Where is it? Are you muting yourself on occasion there, Charles? No. Why? Sometimes it's going in is quiet. Yeah. It could it could just be uh his mic going uh noise canceling, right? Because when he's not talking it might just the sensitivity might auto slide down. Well, let me look and see on some of this. No, it's it just we just notice it disappears at times. Yeah. Oh, okay. So oh, shall we do what we said we're gonna do or uh yeah, yeah, I'm just, just looking something stand up. here discussing while the boats paddle away. <laughs> You're moving slow. You guys have the speed advantage. Yeah. But plus, you know, air as opposed to boat. Like they have to go around bends in the <laughs> river and such like that. And we can just go straight there. Okay. As that's the right. It's not using the right mic. It is mm, well, we can still hear you. <laughs> yeah, I just uh, I got a couple different mics that are set up, and it's uh, not using the one that I usually do. Uh, I got to test it from time to time, is all, because it likes to do that. Okay, all right, we'll work with that. You ought to be able to hear me fine now. It drops that. All right. I'm ready. I've got the giant ape. I have, I've got all, right. all, my, all my stuff. Awesome. I'm trying to find the fucking... Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be Spirit Guardians because if I do call lightning, I need to use my action to... Uh, yeah, do the, uh, oh, yeah. action to to pound. Yeah, it would be better for you to pound than it would be for yeah. you to call lightning. And I, yeah. I, also, like I said, I don't necessarily want you to use your action to pound on some orcs as much as to pick them up and set them on top of yeah. the airship. Yeah, and but I'm still gonna be I'm still gonna be an ape for a while. We may as well use up those hit points if I'm still an ape. <laughs> You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, feel you. How much well, would make you use of water? Okay. Anyways, I, I, I'm confusing myself, but I don't have to. Okay. Um, essentially, because you, like it says that the speed is 8 miles an hour, so therefore D&D &D logic at speed is 80. Fair enough. Right? Sure. Well, what? Is that how it works? I have no I idea, but it works for me. <laughs> I'm okay with know. it. Sounds reasonable. Yeah. No, I'm sure that's that's like that that's their conversion, right? Like, because it does yeah, say eight, eight miles eight an hour for decent yeah. walking speed. So we move Because that's, cause that's I mean, people at a normal walking speed walk three miles an hour. Yeah. In the in the in the, I'm sure that's their equation. Yeah, makes sense. Like, like you take a person's speed divided by ten. That's how far you can move in an hour at normal speed. Oh, there we I'm go. sure that's their D and D conversion. I'm 100 percent of it, or 90, 97, the word 97. Yeah, yeah. And the, it's the same thing. And vehicles are pretty much treated like creatures. So its speed is 80. So there you go, Michael. It can go up and down. There's no. 
no saying how fast it ascends or anything. So 80 feet. That's... Go 80, 80 feet up, 80 feet down, you know, because they don't have the. Yeah. yeah. Or right, even yeah, faster if you just want to yeah, let it go I... down. You know. <laughs> Follow my yeah, garage. so I. So yeah. I can choose for. I can, yes, so I can choose for the prisoners not to be affected by the spirit guardians. That's good. So yeah. when I walk into their area, they won't die immediately. Mm-hmm. That's good to know. So are we, we ready for me for her to do this? Okay, and let's roll an initiative. All right. Does my oh, initiative huh. change when I become a great ape, though? Ooh, yep. Jesus. Yes, that's a so, good one. So right now, my initiative is 18. Awesome. I think... And uh, Garl's is... I want to have a Garl's is 23. Five. Okay. <laughs> So I'm hanging yep. off the um, so I'm hanging, hanging off the uh, Ryan, what did you get for initiative? 16? A- 18. 18. Okay. I'm going first. So the okay. initiative is going to be Garl Orc Warlord or War Chieftain, whatever the fuck he is. Orc Warlord. That it's gonna go, uh, 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 far eye, silence, Nicodemus, really, or, orcs. They rolled a three. Oh, wow. orcs, and then any NPCs that I have to deal with, including moving the ship. Okay. Okay. So we can begin. Let's assume you guys are more at like the what, like the the three hundred foot range right now. Okay. Uh, yeah. Shit. Unless you want to change that, but. You know, at 300 feet, I would like to take a pot shot with my crossbow. I'm going to have that out. <laughs> I'm, you're I'm just, just like, like looking and you're like, darn, you know, I can almost hit that. So you're digging out, you're doing that. You're pulling a crossbow out and loading up a bolt right now, although it's not even your turn. But I'm, that's I'm just like hiding off. I'm just so hiding top, off top of the out. round is Garl. Garl, are you on the balloon or on the deck? Ah, uh, I'm. Since we were con flab, and I'd say we're on the deck. Okay. So, what would you like to do? Garl, there is you like a cultist at the furnace. There's yeah. another cultist down in the uh, propeller room. You have uh, two, one, couple more cultists. Uh, one of yeah. them kind of showing Gobbo and Warvel the harpoon hey. on the front. Yeah. Uh, Garl would uh, off on the side. Go ahead and uh, uh, let's see here. take his uh, handy dandy new little uh, crossbow sure, if, that he found. If you're, yeah, and uh, he would uh, go ahead and. Uh, Train, uh, train, uh, have it loaded and train his uh, sights mm-hmm. on the chieftain. Yeah, as far as that, and as soon as the chieftain goes ahead and either commands them to fire at us or at the uh, prisoners, that's when he'll let loose uh, his uh, shot with with his uh, crossbow. Taking the minus five for the sharpshooter. Okay. Uh, 
Just because you weren't even here last time, Ryan. You see Garl reaches over his back and he grabs not his uh, short bow, but some, it almost looks like a broken crossbow or something at first. But when he grabs it, he gives a snap of his wrist and it pivots out. So if a short bow is only half as strong as a long bow, Ryan, imagine two yeah. short imagine two short bows put together in kind of like an X pattern. Nice. And uh, it's a it's a gnomish crossbow. It has all the properties of a long bow, but it can be used by small people. Good, good. Um, so he gets that out for the ready, takes a readied action. Uh, are you right at the bow of the ship or more to the, to starboard or port side or something? Um, I'll be on the, depending on how we're going on down, on the side that's, uh, where, um, uh, far I will be climbing mm -hmm. down from the lines. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm kind of kind of the starboard bow, okay. um, and and because of like um, you're small, and this is a ship like the gunnels around the ship, you have a three quarter cover. Okay. Uh, the rest of you, if you're like near the gunnels of the ship, the edge of the ship, you can you can take half cover. Uh, small. So Parai is holding her shield right now because. Uh, and holding on to the rope wire with the other hand because she's hanging off there waiting for the power bar. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, he does only uh, you hear the war chieftain he shouts commands as he moves up to where the prisoners are and he yanks one of them off of their feet and is using it as a human shield as he's shouting orders with his great axe in his one hand and a human shield in the other. And it does look like a female. It looks like that it's like a younger female, like a teenager. Oh, cool. female. But she is like dressed up in like winter furs and her hair is like pulled back in a braid and stuff. And so would that... Uh, so as a question, uh, uh -huh. as a question began, would that, uh -huh. uh, would that trigger my ready action or not? Yes, it would. And, uh, you could do it before, of course, he grabs her as cover. Okay. Or as a shield. So you, you can take your ready to action. righty, And that will, let's see here. Come on. There. And that is a sorrowful miss. When you take, uh, I rolled a, well, I rolled a three, but you add, uh, add my pluses. Yeah, and you know it, it, it probably hits him, but he's like, you know, got, he's an orc, he's got armor, he's got furs. It kind of yeah. glances off of him. Well, I got a, I got that minus five, uh, so that's uh, that that would make it a five. The bow itself would make it a six to to hit him. That's why I say it's a sorrowful. Oh yeah, yeah, it probably yeah, yeah. If it's yeah, technically, if it's like less than ten, it doesn't even hit his square. Yeah, so yeah. It, it, um, just a sorrowful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but basically, when he's ducking, it goes over when he's reach it down to grab her and yank her up off of her feet. Yeah. It kind of sails over him. So, so you, um, you're going to take a shot with the crossbow in this turn, Michael? Um, so after uh, the, the war chief, he like yanks, he gives or commands and he grabs a human shield. It is now uh, 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 it's Far Eye's turn. So, uh, so Michael, you were going to take a shot with a crossbow on your turn, right? 
I was thinking about it until the motherfucker grabbed a girl as a human shield. Now I'm thinking differently. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, if you want to, if you want to do that, I could ready a pinch of um, pixie dust so that um, when when you turn me into the uh, thing next to her, I'll have spirit guard. I'll have, I could have spirit guardians and the. Um, I mean, if you wait until next turn, then I could have spirit guardians up and put the pixie dust. What are you going to do with the pixie dust? What? What are you going to do with the pixie dust? Well, if I sprinkle it on me, then I might get something. Well, I might. Well, there's a be yeah. invisible. <laughs> a flying giant deep or something. <laughs> well, uh, it's, there's a seven percent chance I'll get a flying speed of sixty feet. Well, that would be cool, I suppose. Yeah, I, was, I wasn't planning on turning you into anything until you were, like, there. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, I could have Spirit Guardians up, and I could also be flying. Okay, sure. Go for it. Oh, and by the way, the, right. name, of, the name of the place you guys are looking for where God is, is Grudhog. G-R-U-D-D-H-A-U-G. Grudhog. And and uh, for those who speak giant, you know it means river home. Oh, okay. So uh, essentially, so this turn I'm gonna sprinkle some pixie dust on me. You are going to sprinkle some dust. Yeah. Just, yeah. On on me. Yeah. Well, do you have the pixie dust? Yeah. Available? I've got the table. Yeah. Yeah, you got the yeah. table. Yeah, well, roll. Let's see what it does then. That would be sixty. So uh, I, I can now fly for ten minutes. There you go. Hey. So you sprinkle it over your head, and you get light on your loafers. And it doesn't require concentration. It's loafer lightener. So I could get Spirit Guardians up in a second uh, on my next turn, and then we'll get we good. Okay. So that's what you do, and now it goes silence. Well, I'm going to confuse them real hard. I'm going to throw hypnotic patterns uh, at them. What's the range on your hypno pattern? Hang in a minute. Uh, 120 feet. We're 300 feet away. Now, oh, 300 feet away? Yeah. That is a slight problem. So you, there's still stuff you could do, but you're not within range of that spell as quite of yet. And uh, none of my spells are really that rangy. Mm. No, but you could cast something on yourself. You could give out inspiration, plus do something else. You could... Uh, 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 there is like a ballista and a harpoon. Uh, well, I'll go and do that next. I think for now I do inspiration. Best to use it early. Well, bonus that's action. Bonus action. Both. Okay, I'll go to the blister and do bardic inspiration. Um, who wants to fucking look up bull? Oh, never mind. I can. It's because <laughs> they actually have it uh, in the in the description here. Hmm. Harpoon gun. Siege equipment. Plus six to hit. Its range is 120 to 480. Okay. Well, so it's long, but they can... Okay, do you need any particular skills to fire it? Like strength to pull back? Anything? Nothing. Nope. It's at a plus six. The, oh, great. Because literally you're pulling a lever. As I said... At disadvantage, disadvantage because it's at long range. Right? Yeah, yeah. And as I said... 
uh, it takes one action to load, one action to aim, one action to fire. I've already described that Gobble, uh, uh, Warville, and uh, Cultist had, had, had loaded it and assumingly aimed it. So I'll give you the action to fire it. So if you roll me a d20 and you add plus six and tell me what you're shooting at. Wow. I rolled a natural d20 without, without having to have a modifier. Okay. Yeah, so you rolled a crit, but... So you rolled a crit, but on what? 26. Yeah, but it's at a... It's with disadvantage because of the yep. range, 120 to 480. So roll again, d20 again, adds plus six. 11. Plus six, who are you hitting? Who are you attacking? Not the chief because he's got a human shield. So uh, how many of us were there again? Uh, it looks like that there's a... Pro uh, um, I said a dozen, but I'll say that there's like 15. There's a couple more where maybe they're napping or something like that. There's 15 spread out on the two barges, two log rafts. Hmm, I'm thinking it'd be a good idea to take out one of those who are napping so they're just permanently out. It's not like they can defend themselves while they're napping. I'm just saying there's like 15, and that's like 50 normal orcs. Like there's like the main guy and 15. Uh -huh. Could you maybe hit the raft, put them in the water? Well, that's what I'm asking. I'm asking. Well, I'm thinking well, that as well, but here's a consideration. Are the mm -hmm. prisoners tied down to the raft? Well, they're not on all the rafts, right? They're not like tied to the raft. It just looks like... I'm just thinking if a raft goes down, do they go down as well? If they won't, then yes, I'll well, hit the raft. It looks like they're bound. But yeah, it wouldn't be good to sink the raft until they're rescued. Oh, I, yeah, so I'm sorry, thinking I'm, I'm getting horrible flashbacks to revolutionary France. Am I miss... Am I miss... Uh, imagining this. Are, are there prisoners on all the rafts? Is, is there only one raft? How many... There's two rafts. The prisoners are on one raft with the orc with the war chief. Both rafts have like piled up on them. They have things like that are like piled up like cordwood. They have frozen fish. There even looks like that there like might be a couple small crates and some piles of skins, like it, it stuff, right? There are loot. Yeah. 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 Well, then it'll make more sense to um, flush down the barge that doesn't have prisoners. So. That's to aim there. And I'm also thinking, will the person be hard enough to cause a hole? Probably. I mean, uh, you're, you're, you've are you got gravity on your side, and you've got... Um, and it's probably an easier target to hit than an orc, because it's bigger. Ah, uh, just waste a common one. 14 instead. <laughs> mm, good point. Mm, yeah, go for the barge without the prisoners on them. Okay. Let's try and sink this bastard. So roll me uh, 3d10. 3d10, okay. One, two, three. Six, six, and a three. Ah, if only I had six, six, six. No. Six, six, seven. The neighbor of the beast. Apparently, it's actually meant to be 661, the num number of the beast. Anyway, where were we? Yes. Two sixes and a three. And uh, your what's the damage bonus for the voice there? A 3d10, Ryan, we rolled. Oh, never mind. He has I... rolled it, Ryan. Never mind. 15, if I calculated it correct. Yep. I'm just reading something. Okay.
Okay, because I didn't want to assume anything. Okay. Um, you never even noticed when you fire it, you hear a sizzling swish, like a large zipper being undone really quick. And you notice the trailing behind this <laughs> uh, harpoon is a line. Thunk. So yeah. although uh, it doesn't sink the raft, it just bites into the log deep with the har like with the harpoon and the line is connected to the raft so we need we we can easily like dislocate it like just like like untie yeah. it or whatever uh, if it yeah. becomes a problem oh yeah for sure pretty much just lift it way yeah. into the air yeah, yeah, you can do. You, it's just, it's just a, a line. It, it can be just cut. All right. And can but we, it can, can, we it can also be reeled in. Yeah. Fuck yeah. I say we do it now before they start start cutting it. It has to be someone else, right? Because that was your action. Yes, but isn't bardic inspiration a bonus action? It is. Yes. Yes. Well then, I'll best throw it on you since you're going down there and fighting. You need to give it to. Well, you, you're going in fighting. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's good, see, good. that is blah, 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 blah. Just, uh, just let him roll blah, blah, blah. it when he, when he needs to roll it, Kath. Okay. Cause that's, it's a D8, that's, just so Yeah, you know. it's a D8, yeah, okay. One yeah. D8. What do you say to inspire him? Yeah. Do it. Go forth and be the terror of the land like the great King Kong. Boom, boom. I like it. You can do it. Shoulder punch. You can do it. Shoulder punch. Time, to, time for me to get some monkey business. Um, after Kath, Nicodemus. Right. So I got my crossbow out. And I'm like, aiming, aiming, looking, looking. Mm -hmm. And you see I'm this like, harpoon go sailing. Zoom, but I see that I guy so. grab one of the girls and a prisoner, and I yeah. pick it up. I, you know, it's kind of like, instead of looking at it through the barrel, I kind of hold it up, and I scan, and I see what is around him. Like, if there's, is there, like, There's a, a big fucking stack of fish, frozen fish. All right, could, is there a big enough stack of frozen fish that somebody could stand behind that frozen fish? Oh, absolutely! In fact, it looks like that many of the orcs are move are going to be like moving to take okay. cover behind a lot of the, and and behind him where the yep. you know behind him, behind the the chief with the lady. Mm -hmm. All right, I want to I want to drop my thing, take out my wine bottle, and uh, pour a little bit in a circle, step into it. And that opens up a dimensional door. Where oh shit! Nice. I'm right there, behind dude, kind of hidden out of his sight. You are, Michael. Michael, yeah. you are because of where you are. Yeah. You are literally like on the edge of the raft. Like there is a couple feet of raft between okay. the pile of file of frozen fish. And it's the river, the and the edge of the river. Like, there's literally like 18, 24 inches. There's like a log or two, okay. right? That yeah. you are kind of ducked below, but because you're not too big and the pile of fish is stacked quite high, you know, you are able to coach and remain fully obscured, which is the uh -huh. DD term. Uh, yeah, yeah, because I'm not, right? you know, I don't have my no, action to hide. No, but you are totally out of line of sight. And the river is like right there. You could jump in the river or pile of fish, right? You got just this little two foot kind of. And how far is he from me? Within your movement. Oh, excellent. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you pretty much could come running out behind the, the, you know, from around and yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Yep. I, I still got my polymorph, bro. We're good. Nice. <laughs> it just means I won't be able to mention Doris back up to the ship. Yes, oh, yeah. I'll have to carry you out as well, then. Because I was thinking about if it comes worse, I could just jump out of the ship and, like, land in the water and maybe swim over to you, grab you, and dimension this Doris back up if need be. But, no, he had to grab a teenage girl. I can't have that. I'm, <laughs> down. I'm going to kill myself. Oh, yeah. I, I'm with you, dude. Like, <laughs> I'm done. I've, I, 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 I've got feather fall, so it's like, I, 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 I was honestly thinking about jumping as well, but... <clears throat> Hey, cultists, cultists, cultists begin reeling up the rope as you can feel. You hear a blast from the furnace and a pop as the ship moves uh, 80 feet closer. 220? Reeling in, the guys are just working that that uh, winch, just because the ship's moving faster. They could even reel it in with the winch, but it is reeling in. Gobble and Warville. Uh, Gobble is reloading the harpoon while Warville is like uh, adjusting it, and Silence is uh, standing nearby. Uh, to fire again if she so sees fit. What? To fire again if she so, so yeah. sees fit on her turn. Oh yeah, yeah, precisely, precisely. But but yeah, but between the the cultists have have moving the ship, reeling in the harpoon, helping to load and aim the harpoon it can all be done by NPCs. Uh, top of the round at 220 feet distance. Garl. Does, oh, uh, and the orcs. Sorry, I forgot to do the orcs technically. Yeah, go ahead. They just take a lot of them uh, are taking cover and, and pulling out javelins, but taking cover, especially once that harpoon comes firing in and an arrow came sailing in and they're kind of taking cover. Michael? Some yeah. fish kind of like slide down and one kind of hits you on the head. It doesn't do any damage, but it fucking hurts. Like the fish is frozen solid like a block of wood. And, and it's and the fish, it's a big fish. It's probably about the size of like a man's leg. Oh, yeah. Like, so it's one of, yeah, I so it kind of slides off the stack, but that's, you can tell that like you can feel on the other side of the stack that like it, an orc doing. probably dove down and bumped it and you know, you could tell that like they're they're moving around. They're very aware of the blue. They're oh, looks, yeah, you yeah, can yeah. hear yeah, that them all like the yeah. clatter of like the the javelins on the frozen fish and stuff as they're they're taking cover and getting ready for this thing to come in close. The ones on the other raft, you can't see them, but those from the ship can see that uh, they're doing pretty much the same thing. The war chief has the girl. And he is uh, pulling her back, Michael, but he's not, like, you could just hear by his voice as he's shouting, right? You can hear his snarling voice. Uh, he's I'll not going to be, he's not going to move out of your distance, though, because he's got nowhere to really go on a raft, right? You know what I'm yeah, saying? Exactly. Right? So, uh, that's pretty much the orcs and the NPCs. So, yeah, back up to talk to Garl is where we should be. All right. Garl will attempt the same thing with the uh, war chieftain since he's holding a human shield uh -huh. or a, or something that looks humanoid yeah it, it yeah uh, he's totally got his his fucking hand around her neck no i'm not talking forearm i'm talking like he's got he her by the neck 12 let's see here 12 it does a 13 hit? It does not. All right. But that was closer. Garl yeah, yeah. You, that one, that one, he probably, just, he probably swung, he saw it coming in. He just swung his axe. He's holding it in his hand. It kind of, it clattered off, goes spinning up in the air. 
And Garl, I swear, Garl, if you kill her, you owe me a hundred gold piece of diamond as I revivify her. <laughs> Garl, at that point, will jump up on the railing and he'll holler mm -hmm. down, Fight me like a man, you coward. I take all the prizes. And then he'll, with his bonus action, mm -hmm. uh, from the uh, unc uncanny uh, or the cunning action, mm -hmm. he'll uh, drop behind the, uh, the rail and hide. Do you hear from the raft? In in orc, one of them says, "Because uh, you speak orc, right?" Uh, let me see. I think I do. Because they're your aren't they one of your favorite enemies? Yes, they are. As far as that, but let me go and double check here just to make sure. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. I almost thought you gained a language if if the thing if the favorite enemy had a language. Yeah, you do. But I do not speak uh, orc. Uh, from what I'm seeing on my sheet, so I'll go with that. I'll have um, to. I'll, I'll double check and make sure I didn't. I don't have. But it. anyway, one, 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 one yells back. I'll boil your brains in your skull and eat them for my break morning porridge. <laughs> but that's all that uh, Garl will do. Um, his stealth was a uh, when he did that just for was a 17. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's it's easy. Cause like I said, the gunnels yeah. of the ship, you stay close to the gunnel, you got three quarters cover, you crouch, you're totally obscured, you stealth, you <laughs> yeah. oh, um, oh, no, no. Okay. No, my favorite enemy is monstrosities. Monstrosities? What I think it was orcs or humanoids. That's a different character I got that has orcs. <laughs> okay. Mm. After Garl, that goes warlord. What does he do? That arrow came close. He shouts, persist, and the girl dies. Don't you and he, to... like, holds his one hand with his axe up and her out with, with the other hand. He could just swing it and um, slice her head like a ripe melon. To answer uh, Nicodemus, no, not not at this low. What? Two shots. He was asking if I had two shots. Oh. Then. Yeah, you're. He's multi-classed, Michael. Oh, okay, my bad. Yeah. He's got rogue. I know that. Yeah, just ro a rogue and ranger. So. Well, generally, you wait till fifth level to multi-class out a ranger because you know extra tax cool. Ah, so I don't. Guy. I don't do nothing standard. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, whatever. That's how I am with characters. I don't really. I, I, I kind of meta. I think about it, but I don't super duper plan. <laughs> I always kind of think of the end result. Yeah. Um. It's all about character concept for me. Yeah, I always think about the end result. I never think about the map. I always do it in a weird, chaotic way. Just yeah. Uh. Okay. So. Uh. That was the war chieftain. He is taking a readied action on the girl. And uh, uh, what's your face? Far Eye is your goal. Okay. I'm going to cast Spirit Guardians on myself. And what do your guardians look like? Uh, I, I've done this before. It's kind of like I'm, it looks like I'm surrounded by a celestial red lightning storm, basically. Ooh. Well, it's, yeah, it's I'm, almost like I know. Using, it's like those weird uh, globes that you could buy where you like touch it and it arcs electricity, right? Like, 
Yeah, and uh, fuck it, I'm gonna use my fourth level spell on it. And my last fourth level spell on it. Because why not? Cool. Uh, and so, how how long will it take me to fall uh, down up, down to. Oh, I'll land on that, ra- on that raft. Well, how long would it take you to fall? Oh, I see what you mean. Um, like, well, just like cannonball on this fucker. I'll tell you one thing. In my mind, I don't picture you quite over top. Mm. But, but, when you get over top, I would let you fall and still take an action. Mind you, uh, you're going to be prone. Falling, you're prone. Mm. Yeah. Unless, if we make it a jump. I mean, I I, I, I have feather fall once a day. I, I could use my reaction oh. to well, do that. Well, you could feather then, fall. Okay. Yeah, I'm good. Then, yeah. Then, like, uh yeah, because you can feather I, fall just at the last instant and break your landing. Yeah. You really can't. So I will really, allow really you to do that. Enjoy. I will allow you to do that, but it would have to be. Yeah, <sighs> yeah. It, it's not going to capsize it, which is, which is um, unfortunate. But that that would have been cool. But yeah. I would say it would and have I, to I be, like, mind. next round to get to where you could get hit the raft because you guys have, like, you guys... Yeah, did I, it, I'd have to wait. You guys did not specifically say from the whole start of this that you guys were, like, coming a 1,000 feet and coming right down on top of them, right? Like, I, I picked you guys... Yeah. You know, they're ahead, they're ahead, they're ahead. They're yeah, ahead, we, we, yeah, yeah, we, we got to wait another round right? for this. Yeah. Between, um, I mean, hey, especially, I, I, and listen, and especially because right. one of them is harpooned to the right, ship. I, I, actually, fuck it. How, how far up am I right now? How far what? How, how far am I from the the raft with the chieftain on it? Well, I said 220, 220 feet was the distance. Right. Uh, oh, yeah, and right, I think here right now, you guys are about 100 feet uh-huh. up. I have fly right now, right? So, right. Uh, uh, of course, if we're, yeah. Oh, you got fly, of course. Like, there you go. What? So, I'm gonna. Well, syringe of polymorph. I might just fly like 60 feet, I like towards Michael because a uh, polymorph uh, is probably no 220 feet. Yeah, uh, fuck okay. it. I'm going to fly 60 feet towards Banco. Okay. So you're flying ahead of the ship, 60 feet ahead of the ship, pretty much. Yeah. Um, after you goes silence. I just like to point out that the ship's going to move 80 feet on its own. Oh, I'll stay there then. Yeah. That's better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Silence. Yep. It's your goal. Oh, I'm going to fire you again. You want to fire the harpoon? You may. It's loaded and aimed. Just tell me who you want to fire before you roll. Uh, um, I think best to keep the onslaught on the first boat. This time, let's try and hit someone. Hey. Uh, because you already have one line, there won't be uh, lines attached to any more. Mm-hmm. Like to the next yeah. one. That's good. Yes, let's start hitting people. Um, 
So you want to attack the raft that you already hit? Yes. And you want to actually attack one of the orcs? Yes. Okay. Then roll a d20 with disadvantage. So roll twice, take the lowest, and add plus six. Okay. And that tell me what you 10, get. Plus and six, I 16. said they are taking cover. You still hit one. Roll yes. me 3d10. 3d10. Hang on a moment. Okay, two fives and a two. Twelve. Okay, you hit one and it slams into him, like, solidly, but he's an orc. He's still surprisingly standing. But by standing, I mean alive. He's crouching. He has half cover I'm giving him. Pretty sure it took the wind out of him. Oh, yeah. It, it hits him hard, like... Like, it, you're like, oh, yeah, if that was a person, it would have killed him, eh? But that's, yeah. Close. Yeah, like, a, gets hit by a harpoon. Um, Nick Odemus. You can hear the commotion of the moving orcs and him moving back and yelling and the firing of arrows and the clack of the crossbow. And blah, blah, blah. But you hear him. You hear him giving orders. You know where his voice is. You know if you run around this pile of fish, you know you could... But you did hear him say, uh, what did he say? Something like, like, like fucking, oh, like, uh, desist or she dies or something to that extent. Persist and she dies or something to that effect, I'd said. Basically, fuck off or I'm going to kill the girl. That's more or less what he says, right? Fuck off or I start killing prisoners. Okay. So I'm going to come around from behind the fish. Hey. And I'm going to take out my wine jug and offer it to him and be like, hey, orc, friends? And cast <laughs> charm person on him. Nice. Hey, do you think that's a bit late? No. We haven't hit him. We have not assaulted him. Uh, good, he has not been damaged good, by any of my hey, allies. Hey, good, good alcohol can solve any problem. Problem. The point is, charm person. Make your saving throw. Uh, I just eight. hit someone. I'm a gonna. Yeah, but you haven't hit him. That's the point. Yeah, you hit someone <laughs> on the other raft. Yeah. Um. He's pretty fucking tough. He's an orc. I, I, well, I fully believe that he could kill this girl in one ready to action without too much of a hassle, you know? Uh, I'm assuming Michael, that's a not, wisdom save? It is a wisdom save, DC 15. He rolled a 19. Motherfucker. So he doesn't have like a negative four wisdom or anything, right? <laughs> War Chief has actually has a plus two wisdom save. Motherfucker. Uh, I want to be like, okay. Uh, 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 Don't you think you'd fight better without that girl? Like, you know, just toss her to the side. You'll fight better without her, right? <laughs> Fuck. Fuck. <laughs> oh, that's my turn. I'm I'm also thinking about just uh, swinging you off and trying to land on him. Well, you don't want to land on her either. Yeah. No. Fuck! 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 <laughs> All right, I'm done. Yeah. I can say fuck a few more times. Yep. Yeah. I mean, how often do I get a chance to use you know charm person against giants? I don't. No, I thought it was. I thought it was a. Uh, certainly, uh, Valiant, try. It, it just rolled amazingly at that time. It's a war chief, so I didn't think I could kill him in one blow, even if I, like, took the, uh, the cure, inflict wounds at, like, a third level spell slot. I still don't think I'd kill him in one shot. Because I recall that they're pretty badass. They're a little bit, if he was just a regular orc, yeah, I'd definitely do that. 
kill him. <laughs> oh, you don't. I don't know if you speak orc, but the words are still uh, <laughs> uh, unmistakable, no matter what language. Kerplunk. Kill him. And two of them. Uh, Michael. Uh, okay. Where the hell? We'll, uh, oh, what the fuck? Roll. Oh, there it is. No, yeah. And because you've got a pretty good armor class, Michael, you are. Right. Able to uh, outmaneuver these two orcs that step forward with you and take chop with their axes. You step aside, and their axes chop into the thick logs of the decking of this this raft, but they miss you. <laughs> yeah, and you just you just barely you don't even like spill any like foam. <laughs> um the other guys are kind of looking but they're still just ready to action on like the balloon the other raft the guys are trying to like are spending this round trying to loosen the harpoon but it's not loosening it looks like they're t you know probably gonna cut it next round uh npcs Will load name maneuver eighty feet up is one forty feet away, and I'll say that like whatever, like Ryan, if you oh, I don't never mind, never mind, you confuse well, me. So, you I'm confuse me so much. I'm you so much. On the, uh... yeah. yeah, you're on the ship. Okay, never mind, never mind. Um, so back to the top of the round. You guys are at 140 feet distance. All right. Garl will holler out the gobble. Protect my priest! And then he, he told me to load the gun! And, uh, then, <laughs> and then he'll uh, say, death to you that harass my priest! And he's going to switch his aim over to the one that swung at Nicodemus and, uh, okay. fi and fire at, at it. You may. And you may, because those, those two don't even have cover. Okay. And I, I'm not going to take the, uh, the minus five so, uh, uh, from the sharpshooter. So. Hey, but you got an ally within five feet, so you get your sneak. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. kind of that's what I yeah. was... Uh, uh, thinking on so uh does a let's see there i believe it is uh I have one two that does a 14 hit yep all right and then let's get back to this Clear that out, and it's a D8. So roll that. Does 10 points of damage. Michael, you're there, and an arrow comes sizzling in at a super kind of surprisingly high velocity. And um, uh, Garl, you notice that there's like very little arc to this archery. Ah. Your, your arc is more straight at this range than from what you notice from a normal short bow. Oh, uh, you know it hits I, him. Mm -hmm. what, I, what I did forget was my sneak mm. attack. Mm. Oh. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I believe yeah, that is. And that will be an additional six points, so 16 total. Describe killing him. One down. As he got close, close to my priest, I hollered that, and I let loose that bolt 
the bolt goes streaming on down into the back of this orc's skull. Oh yeah, he doesn't even see it coming. As far as he knows, it's like alive, 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 dead. Yeah. <laughs> and right on it, and it comes out the back of the shaft, hangs out the back of his he uh, neck, base of his skull and neck, top of his neck, and the tip of the bolt is out his mouth, peering <laughs> at Nicodemus. That's all you see, Nicodemus, his startling mouth, face, and all of a sudden... You you actually get hit in the chest by one of his teeth that gets knocked out from the tip of the arrow. And what the hell? What just hit me? And you realize, oh shit! There's like an arrow sticking out of his mouth. Oh, that Garl! And that's uh, what Garl's just gonna do. He isn't even gonna bother uh, hiding this time. He because he wants him to take fear the, of him and and put in and trepidation upon them if they come near his priest. <laughs> Keep Bro, him safe, so far as, uh, so far as turn, because she just said, right? What? It's not, though. It's I a warlord's think, turn. Uh, so, uh, warlord. It's not oh, though, sorry. It's a warlord's turn. Sorry. <clears throat> Come take me on yourself, you bastard. Ah. Michael? Yeah. He's fucking taking you up on that. <laughs> he throws her down so hard, it looks like she goes unconscious. When she makes contact with the box, like he's like wrestling, like he's literally like clutching her. So he just slams her down so hard that when she makes contact with the logs, you hear the smack, that meaty smack of a head on a hard surface. And she goes limp and he just raises his axe over his head, two hands, charges in over her head. Chop, excuse me. I, that's cool. That's cool, Holmes. We got this. You can do this. Uh. Michael, does a 16 hit you? It does not. <laughs> does an eighteen does an eighteen hit you on the backhand sweep? It does not. <laughs> wow. Red plate, buddy. Wow. Well, I don't know what to say. That's what he does. He takes a swing and you move, and he takes a backhand swing and you're not there again. <laughs> 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 That'd teach you to mess with one of my priests. <laughs> crickets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, crickets. Right. Okay, that's War Chief. Go far eye. All right. Uh, so I think I'm just gonna swing. Uh, so could I conceivably swing off the? Well, either I will land among as many of the orcs as I can. I would like okay. to... Wish for everyone... Oh, me. Uh, your choice, dexterity, acrobatics, or uh, strength, athletics, yeah. but then tell me, yeah, what you're, okay. but tell me what you're doing. First, tell me how you're doing this. So, uh, because in my mind, it's still you guys are still. It's so still. I'm, uh, you could dash. At so, um, I assume, I assume my 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 like my fire speed isn't enough to get. It. So if I you could heard just. What, if, you heard what, if you heard what, Mike, and, if you heard what Michael said, you could dash, and. 
Yeah, I'll do that. Fuck you it. would do that. almost be there. You would be like pretty much like just. You'd be off. in the range of some cool shit. And yeah. You wouldn't could quite I? There, but you could I just stop? Stuff within... Could I just stop flying be? for the? Can I just start flying for the last few feet and just follow the re- free follow the rest? And then and use my reaction the on Featherfall to not take any damage? And... Yes. Oh, I'm, I'm over the if river. If you wanted okay. to fly out using your dash, um, I don't even... I wouldn't... This is... You could either use a spell slot for a Featherfall or... We can make either a strength athletics or dexterity acrobatics check to see if you take any damage from hitting the river. But that's what you want to do. You want to just go and plunge into the river. So you'll be about like 10, 20 feet away from the raft, but in the river. Correct? Hello? Bonjour? Uh, I, uh, I, I don't know. I, I think I'll just dash as close as I can. And uh, then uh, if I'm close enough to say no, we uh Because you would be about I 20 feet away thing, from, the, so, from um, the raft. Yeah, I'll just dash as close as I can. Okay. So you'll be about 20 feet away from the raft. They are going to... They have had... Ready uh, to- I'm going to let six okay. of them throw javelins at you. Okay. Sure. All right, don't listen to me. I'm an idiot. <laughs> okay. Okay. Down on the boat by I've, got, I've got my shield out, so hopefully. <laughs> oh, I, I mean, come on. You, you, seriously, you're afraid of dying? Like, you know that you guys are tougher than that. Live large. Die well. Totally. I'm just going to get I'm just going to... I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, and this just, is, uh, and these are the guys. Dash as close as I can to them, and then just, yeah, fuck it. Yeah, because yeah, because uh, yeah, because these are the six guys on the. Come at me. Come at me, bro. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Oh well. A 23 hit you? Ryan. Uh, Does a 23 yeah. hit you? What's your armor class? Because I rolled a 23 at 18. A 19. Yeah, 23 hits. Well, both the 18 and the 19. Damage. No. What about the 18 and the 19? Did that hit? Oh, uh, my shield is out, so my AC is 20. So no, they don't hit. Okay, thank you. Sorry. And I I rolled a total of um, 18 for my concentration check, so I think that's fine. Mm -hmm. It will be. Um... Because you're, like, shielded, because you're, like, heavily armored, uh, one javelin manages to hit you for six points of damage. All right. Good, good. Okay. Yep. After you are 20 feet away from the raft, you can see, like, how uh, Nicodemus is, uh, yeah, and, and, and there's still lightning, like, going around within 15 feet of me. I'm just, like, I'm only just at a range of these guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, silence. You see Far Eye swoop in quickly. You guys are 140 feet away. You may shoot again if you so choose wish. Uh, this would be your last attack with disadvantage for the range. Uh, just tell me who you want to sh- shoot at or what you would like to do. 
the chief is still standing, isn't he? Yeah, he's he's actually uh, threw the girl down hard to the deck, and he uh, uh, is uh, trying to chop Nicodemus with his axe, but Nicodemus is so nimble that he's not even uh, spilling beer foam as he prances out of the way of the attacks. Well, I'm aiming for the chief, then. He's not got the okay. woman shield. Correct, he does not. So, roll again with disadvantage. Roll twice, take the lowest, add six. Hang on a minute. 20? That hits him. Roll 3d10. A one and nine and a seven. <laughs> a one, 17. a nine, and a seventeen points of damage. Nicodemus, this blister bolt or javelin or something comes sailing in and just huang hits him. My eyes get big. Just Although thinking. it hits him hard, he still barely moves on his feet. He almost he yeah. almost doesn't okay. he almost doesn't even acknowledge it because of his fearsome <laughs> oh, attack being on you. Like, this guy wow. must be a barbarian. He must be like taking half damage for all of this. Damn. Garl's arrows got really big with that thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and Garl's arrow yeah, hit him with uh, practically the same yeah, damage. They're, yeah. Now they're they're always that big, Michael. It's just like when you see them, usually they're so far away. And, and his arrows hit the other orc with practically the same damage. Like Girl did sixteen points, and this was seventeen. <laughs> uh, so silence. After you, anything else you'd like to do? You gave a uh, you gave a bardic inspiration to Far Eye before. Any other bonus actions, or would you like Not to move? Just you're stay gonna, you're posted, gonna keep. You're really? gonna keep. You're gonna keep triggering the the harpoon yep. gun for now. Keep manning the harpoon gun. Okay. Nicodemus, on to you in the battle. You can see like some of the javel, some of the orcs turned in through javelins, and you can see that just, out of the corner of your eye, far eye swooping I'm in, in there with like. <laughs> With it looking like a uh, uh, storm uh, from the X Men, just with the lightning around. I I could not hear a word he just said. Yeah, you're Iron Man. Yeah. Transformers. I got a question for the DM though. Does yes. readying yeah. an action? To cast a spell, prevent one from using a bone action spell. For example, specifically, no. No. I ready an action to polymorph homie when he gets on the boat and still use my bonus action to cast healing word on. Yeah. On yeah. 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 Because do you want, you just cast healing word and then you ready your polymorph. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose it doesn't matter how many hit points I give her, but I'll roll that anyway. Uh, I will bonus action cure her. Mm -hmm. May the blessings of Bacchus fall upon you. Wake okay. up! And she gets seven hit points back. Oh, you see her stir. Like, and clearly, I'll... like, rolls over from her slumber. I will item interaction and toss her a dagger. Cut your bonds! And uh, I'll allow it. Yeah. And as my readied action, I will lock eyes with the far eye flying in and knowing wink, really like dramatic, like, gotcha. Ready my uh, partner. So as soon as he lands, he is pulling more. <laughs> and that's the turn. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, after so yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, so on my turn, I'm gonna. Yeah, wait. Let's do that. Then I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna land, and then the these guys are all gonna take damage from my spiritual guardians, and then I'm gonna become a giant ant. After Nicodemus, it goes the orcs. 
uh, the orcs on the one raft, they, uh, two of them, uh, remove the harpoon, whether they cut it, break it, whatever. They are no longer tethered to the ship. The other six are gonna Oh, I'm thinking hard here. Because uh, there's Take. there's there's two there's six that can do something on that one raft and there is six that can do something on the other raft. That's not including the the war chief. Um kind of want six are taking a ready action on the ship and this is kind of a little bit split up between rafts right like that's why i'm just saying that there's a dozen that can do something six and six but six of them are gonna are gonna ready action on the ship and six of them are gonna javelin at far eye again because before it was a ready action, and then you moved into range. They did. Now they're going to do it again, and 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 uh, <clears throat> uh, and the orcs are taking cover. The war chief does not have cover. So. So that makes sense, right? Six, six, six are taking a ready to action on the balloons. Six are going to throw it far eye because uh, Nicodemus is fighting the the war chief. So, uh, uh, fighting may be a bit of a wrong term, but I'm standing there. <laughs> we got your back, brother. What the fuck? Garl will holler. <laughs> hmm. Okay, I haven't used my app in a while and it's just so it's doing weird things for me. I just got into a menu I didn't even know existed. So uh I'm I'm uh, oh no wonder. Fuck. It would help if my phone wasn't upside down. Whoa. Uh, the first attack on you, Far Eye, is a 23. A 16 misses. A 24. Oh, uh, yeah, 24 hits the fuck out of me, bro. No, uh, not, not you. This is on uh, Far Eye, sorry. Oh, okay. Oh, Far Eye dropped on, uh, I think he was. Okay, well, he got hit twice that time. I think he was having an issue. I think I see where he said uh, he yeah. a comment of 24 to something. My internet just went down. On my turn, I want to land in an area where my 15-foot radius hits as many orcs with a K as possible. I like orc with a K, by the way. <laughs> then attack. You know, I just want to land and whack old do whack a do some uh, people. You know. Yeah. Hey, tell him he takes uh, 14 piercing damage from two javelins. So that was that was the orcs. NPCs are loading, yada yada, maneuvering. 
the ship moves, it is 60 feet. The orcs take their ready to action. That was two separate ones, right? Yeah. That's and if he wants to know, it was like a 23 to 24 for the attack. Huh. So. Oh shit, that's not good. Five hits and a crit on the balloon. Oh, oh motherfucker, that's what I did not want. Oh. They better have a re balloon repair kit. I'm on that. I'm on that boat with it. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, girls, we're losing air. Not good. Oh. Just that's why he made his uh, uh, concentration checks. Easy. Um. Uh, you see them sail and hit the balloon and go into the balloon and you can hear like, well, I won't say you hear like escaping air, but you can tell that like, yeah, it's like the, the stability is going, but it's still not destroyed. Uh -huh. But it looks <laughs> bad. Boy. And, uh, you can tell they're like, oh, and they're like, and the one guy's like, take it down. Let's, <laughs> they're going to take it down to the river surface. Ooh. So they don't come crashing down. Um, so, top of the round, Garl. Garl, well, go ahead. And uh, he's been having a hard time hitting this. Uh, who's all around his uh, priest, Nicodemus? Uh, really? <laughs> only, only, he's only fighting the war chief. The other guys are dealing with the balloon and far eye. Okay. Then uh, I'm going to, I'm protecting my, my priest. I'm, I'm going to be firing at the, uh, the war chief. And I will take my minus five from my sharpshooter and hope okay. I go high. Well, now's the time. Yes. Go ahead and roll. <laughs> That's a mess. Okay. I mean, uh, I, I end up starting with, uh, what, six? So a, one, a unnatural one plus the one from the <laughs> magic of the crossbow. So... Uh, and uh, two, so that uh, three. I think that went wide. <laughs> I think that went wide. And uh, Garl will say, "Leave my priest alone! What are you doing over there, Gabo? I told you protect my priest." He's a. <laughs> All right, we're close enough. I don't have to worry about this stupid thing more. <laughs> yeah, because like, as I said, uh, too, yeah, now the ship is 60 feet away. So, Oh, and uh, as a bonus action, mm -hmm. I'll cast Hunter's Mark on the war uh, chief. Oh, okay. Now you... that I'm within my range. You may. All right. That's everything I could do at the moment. Except I'll uh, move down onto the deck. Baby. Ready? Okay, so that's a... Huh? Heather's here. Yeah. 
I'll go out and talk to her, okay? Sorry, I didn't realize I forgot I was not muted. That's okay, my dad. Oh, Michael, what's your armor class? You're fucking nimble. Oh. AC20. For the love of God. It's so difficult to get this phone to unmute after I just yeah. muted he again, Michael. Fucking chop, chop. I'm rolling like 18 and stuff, but not enough. <laughs> That's because girls distract him. By the way, I forgot to ask. Uh, did uh, did the lady on the NPC things uh, that I raised from the dead, more or less, did oh, she uh, uh, cut her uh, on? You see how she has. Like, like she did grab the knife or the dagger, and she's like kind of <clears throat> like taking like a half roll away in the commotion. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. She's utilizing the dagger that you that you threw. At least it appears to be, because you know, as, as soon as you cast the 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 healing word on her before you saw immediately her like pull her legs and it almost looked like she was going to get up and she remembered where she was and then when you threw that dagger she just clutched it and took a half roll over so her back is to you right now but but uh this guy's fucking raging chopping at you and you're just clip clopping around going come on guy Jesse. <laughs> Okay, uh, so that was War Chief, and he totally missed you again. So Nick or uh, Farai, now, how is it you would like to do? Farai has said that he wants to land on the boat where there are as many orcs as possible that will have to make saving throws from his uh, spiritual guardian's aura, and then he wants to whack, <laughs> you know, fist clump, boom, boom, two separate orcs. I will say that he's doing uh, what Garl would say, protect our priest. So I'll say he's not on the one with you and the warlord, although the warlord is occupied with you. Uh, the, the, the prisoners are there, but, but more or less useless. The girl is doing her own thing, doing the thing with the day. Uh, but he can land on the front of the deck where the other six orcs were, where they threw javelins. Right? He can land there, oh, so the six... Me? When he lands, the ready to action goes off. And he... You know, right, orc, sorry. Uh, the lady sitting next to me has never played. No, oh, you're familiar. Yeah. She has. She's played D&D &D back in the day, but she's laughing at me. Yeah, he will land and he will immediately be transferred into the, the giant ape thing. <laughs> and crush. I'm messaging him to roll two attack rolls. As a... And they got to make, uh, but they got to make saves, right? Yeah. As however many is like you said, you wanted to land and get as many as I'm possible. Given, I've given him six. Giving him six? Ah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. As a giant ape, homie. That's what I'm texting him right now. Make two um, attack holes. Do you know what kind of homie. save they have to make? They are wisdom saves. Uh I think his D C is only fourteen. Okay. I'm about to ask him, what's your save, DC? And 
and also a roll 3d8 damage. Uh, only two of them made it. So how much damage? Uh, just ask him to roll oh. first, uh, to roll 3d8 damage. He has not replied. Yeah. Oh, he, yeah. and he also reminded me they need to make saves for spiritual guardians too. Yeah, I know. We've got that. Yeah. Save DC, homie. <laughs> I bet you only two made it because 13 was a dividing point. The other numbers were like really high, and then the highest after that was 13. So I yeah, think it's that either, it's DC's ever either 14 or 15. Yeah, uh, so for some reason I, think yeah, I know I know that two of them made it because it was like very high teens in a 20 something. So okay, so, so yeah, so I know two of them made it. Yeah, and it's definitely not less than 13. So. No, nah. All no. Right. So just waiting for his attack and damage rolls. And I also asked if he wanted to attack the orc uh, chief alone or just two random orcs. It would have to be two random orcs. It would have to be. Interesting question he has here. What? His save DC is normally 14, but if he were to use the stats, a.k.a. the wisdom of a giant ape, his DC would then go down to 12. That's a Correct. huge thing. So would his DC be 12 then? Correct. It would? Okay, it's DC's 12 then. Okay, Always. so three made it then. All right. Damage? You come over on this side. Damage? You the mosh. The mosh. For mosh. Damage Garage. plus fist attack damage. How are you? How are you? Nah, got a slight headache. My glasses didn't go as well as I thought. They won't take my frames. I can't tell Michael if you're really playing D and D out in a boat. Yeah, I'm as home. That's great. Yeah. That's great. That's a good. Yeah, I don't know if it's cool or nerdy. Well, I. I, I would do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, what it, what it tells me is the uh, Zoom app for the OS is pretty solid. Yeah. I wish uh, battery power. That's the only issue, eh? Yeah. You'd have to carry one of those external battery packs. Yeah. Maybe to do that. Yeah. Uh, plus. Is he going to hit us up with any damages or anything? Yeah, 24 radiant, 32, and 24 to hit for the fist. That's the one to hit whoever he's. Okay. He pretty much just goes ape shit and he destroys those six. Huh? Because if his radiant was 24 damage. That's 3d8. Right? That's max damage, right? Right. Nah. Wait. Oh, he did say he buffed it. He cast oh, it to higher. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, so, but good catch, because I never would have thought of that. Um, but 24, so, okay, four orcs dead. Whoa! Or, sorry, three orcs dead. Yeah, his, four orcs his... dead, 29 damage for the first attack. Right, so, for the four orcs hit. dead. I, I just asked who are you fist pummeling, the orc chief or the random orcs? Yeah. It has yeah, to be the random orcs. Okay. It just has to be because of okay. of right, placement and whatever. Because they're more at the f front of the raft, and you and him are already fighting farther at the back, right? Because yeah. he was moving back with the girl as they were moving forward and such, and to attack. So he's dealing with them. You're dealing with him because that's um. So he pretty much takes out five of those orcs there's one very injured orc on that raft as well as the war chief on that raft but yep there's like eight other orcs on the other raft because they disconnected the harpoon all eight of those guys will be able to act um after his go, it goes silence. 
Silence, do you, would you like to take a shot at the war chief again? Yep. Okay, because uh, they are doing the loading and the aiming. You may fire. You are close enough. You do not roll with disadvantage. Uh, just FYI, two, uh, the three orcs that died from the spiritual guardians, let's just say two more died as he did 32 and 29 points of damage respectively with fist. Oh, yeah. I, I already took that into account. I okay. said there's only one orc left in the war chief on this raft. And it, uh, one hey, injured orc and the war chief. Three prisoners and Nicodemus. That's what's on this raft. Okay. <laughs> and a couple uh, now. Yep. Okay, and I uh, don't roll with a modifier, just a plain 20, right? No, I'm no disadvantage, just roll 20 once and add 6. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, and I've got 24. Last time. You hit him. You hit the war chief <laughs> again. Roll 3d10 piercing damage. 3d10. Coming up. A 9, an 8, and a 2. Wow, 17. So 19, 19 points of damage. 19. Comes sizzling in and hits him once again, smashing into him. This time, he kind of stumbles. It's He that is not so easily able to simply ignore that he's being struck by a siege weapon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Nicodemus. Uh, it is your go. He gets hit okay, with uh, a siege with a bolt to get or a. You know what? I'm going to cast the second level spell and bring about my wine bottle spiritual weapon and whack the war chief over the head with it. For a 17 to hit the war chief. That hits. That hits. The damage is a D8, right? Uh, I believe so. Plus your that modifier. Be, what, so that would be 10 points of damage. Uh, <laughs> fourth damage. And as a bonus, that, since that went by bonus action, my action is going to be to toll the dead. The champagne cork of will splash up oh, in his face. Nice. Is that a wisdom or I don't remember? Or constitution. I don't recall. I'll look it up if you want. I thought it was could have sworn it was wisdom. Uh yeah, it probably is. I'll roll wisdom. Uh -huh. Uh, whichever you prefer to roll. I don't really care. Told the dead by me. Oh, he rolled a natural 20. 22 he rolls for his save. Absolutely nothing happens to him. Either it was con Can't or it trip. doesn't matter. He's good. And that would be my action other than to yell at the lady who I tossed the dagger to. Free mm -hmm. the other prisoners. And yeah, that's it. Free the other prisoners, and that's my turn. I'm done. Um, it is a wisdom saving throw. Just orcs. Orcs. I said there was eight of them. Yep. On the one raft. One injured one near the ape and the warlord. Two are going to stay behind. On the other raft, one of them is a injured one. They're going to stay with the raft, while the other six orcs leap across from one raft to the other. I'm going to let six orcs jump over. Two will stay to make sure that the raft, you know, whatever. Um, I'm going to roll for them. If any of them... Let's put it this way. It's easy enough for them to jump across. They even have the aggressive. So they're going to be able... Whoever can make it across 
the gap will still be able to attack because they have the aggressive trait. They can move when moving towards an enemy, but I'll deal with their leap first as six of them come sailing over. If I roll, I'm going to roll a d20 for each one. If I roll a one for any of them, they go into the river. So hopefully, could lose some. A 10. 17. None of them plunge into the river. All six of them successfully leap over. And, uh... Just to advocate for Far Eye, mm -hmm. if any of them leap over and get within 15 feet of the giant ape on the yeah. barge, they no. take a wisdom uh, saving time. Um, I, I actually know that, and that's exactly the point in my head where I'm at, is that um, six of them jumped over. The There's one guy st still within range. He's going to have to make a check. He has to. The others, I was going to say, are going to split up. So I'm going to give him f four saves I'm going to make to see how they are affected. So you could tell him right now to roll his damage for his spiritual... Stand up. This time, three failed, one made it. So he could potentially kill them all. These all four of these guys. Message sent. I'll let you know in the quad. Uh, Michael. Does a 23 hit you? Uh, Nicodemus? Yeah, yeah, Nicodemus. Yeah, one work is going to run in and hits you for 23 if that hits. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that, that hits. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, yeah. Uh, you take eight <laughs> points of damage as like, uh, like the works kind of split up. Some, as they leap across, they just leap right into a far eye storm. And are you know probably even killed, but the other three kind of come towards you, and one of them manages to uh, take a slash at you for eight point. Just and, uh, my concentration check. And, and we can go on. We can continue on because he'll tell me the damage, and I'll just know how many of them are. Oh, twenty motherfucking seven. <clears throat> yeah. See, he, four of them die. They just... Oh, one of them lived? Are... Half damage is still 13. <laughs> no. <laughs> Six jumped over from the raft, right? There was already one injured one there. I split up the six between him and you. So uh -huh. four of them made a save. Only one of them made it, but they all die. Four die. Oh, all four die. Oh, never mind. Yeah. Right, because I the one that made it was the one that was already only had like two hit points left. So he died, then the other three died, but the other three that split up came to your side of the raft. Kind of went after you, and one of them managed to get through an attack and slashed you. So there's only on this raft. The three prisoners, which you can see, she does crawl over and begins working at the other people's bonds near like where the dead orcs are scattered on the other half of the raft, right? Oh, just outside of the storm. Uh, you can see that she's working on their bound bindings. You, Far Eye is there at the storm around him 
and like oh what was it there's like six a bunch of whack load of fucking dead orcs around him like 10 dead orcs around his storm and you're fighting the warlord three orcs have kind of come in there's still two orcs on the other raft just maintaining the raft uh npcs go 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 load aim on the ship the girl is working at the bonds oh bindings. no gobble He's going to defend the priest. He'll take a pop shot instead of loading. Oh, he is? Yeah. Okay. He's he will. Now. He's yeah, like, oh, he okay, will. Fine. I'll do it. Okay. Yeah, fire that for him then. All right. uh, Armor class is 16 of the Warlord. 17 on the dice, so I'm assuming he hits. it's like a 21. Yeah. Gabo, the man. He's protecting his priest. That would be four points of piercing damage. Gabo. Okay, nice. Gabo nice. with the win. Yeah, you see another arrow come striking in. You can see like the fletchings match that of the goblin companion, Gobble. You go, Gobble! I got him! Now I'm going hide! And he'll drop that below the deck so that people can't be seen for a you know bonus action hide. Okay. Which is pretty shitty. Anybody with a pass perception of 11 can see him. And, like his bow still sticking up or something. It's well... Like, uh, it's pretty shitty hot. <laughs> he would he would technically because like, I don't know, he would have like some, some sort of bonus because like I said, the gunnels are for, for small creatures are three quarters cover. Yeah. Yeah, so he's at least so, got cover, right? Yeah. <laughs> he's got cover. Lots lots of it. Um uh Warvel goes to load then and one of the cultists who is winding up the winch, he can aim. So it'll still the harpoon could still be set. Uh, back up to the top of the round, Garl, you can see that uh, uh, Far Eye's storm is causing devastation amongst the orcs that try to get close to him. So he's like in a standing amidst the slew of a few of several bodies while well, three orcs and the warlord are after Nicodemus but they just can't seem to really pin him down all right uh garl will uh, go ahead and uh, before he shoots he's gonna say leave my wives alone and my priest and then he's gonna fire without the uh minus uh from sharps shooter uh at the uh, uh, war chieftain, yeah, with a dirty 20. Yeah, that hits. And let's see here, and he'll do 1d8 plus 3d6 now, and that is 14 on straight die rolls plus. Uh, I think it's three. Yeah. Sneak attack two. Well, I, that's the hunter's mark. Yeah, the three d six or that, and the, and like that. So, um, but uh, yeah, it's yeah, seventeen points of damage. Okay, he's so. still up, but he's got a couple arrows in him. He's like, you know. You can see that there's like blood running from his mouth at this point. He must have some internal injuries. <laughs> and uh, then uh, Garl will uh, go ahead and uh, hide behind the uh, the side of the ship. Yeah, you may. As I said, three quarters cover. Yeah, you could be like obscured. I know. Oh, let's see. Huh. Yeah, he he has uh, has a nineteen, I believe. Yeah. No, they'd yeah. have to they'd have to make a perception to see you, and you would be obscured even if or uh, three quarters cover, even yeah. if they could. Um. Uh. After you, it goes war chief. He. Yeah, we couldn't have been friends. <laughs> but no. No. You had to go all orc war chief on me. 
This is on you, bro. You fired upon me first. <laughs> River they pirates. Know with the crickets. <laughs> <laughs> that in response, eh? <laughs> Everything just sounds like a joke flopping. Yes. <sighs> we'll have to put that in the title. Something about the cricket in the title. Yeah. Um. Uh, and we've had a few people watching on our watch party. Well, they should, like, go do something. <laughs> yeah. um, fuck, Michael. Hey, it's on him, bro. <laughs> he chopped you once. Um, for only seven points of damage, but where is it? And he says. Thank God for the uh, Warcaster feed, or else I would have lost concentration, but I have advantage, and so we're good. <laughs> and he says, Knock that thing out of the sky. Oh, wait. He can't do that. That's an action. Never mind. I assume it is, anyways. Yeah, I assume it's an action. It's an action. Yeah, yeah. So never mind. It's, uh, yeah, it's listed under actions. Yeah. Just, uh, cool. So uh, he attacked. He hit you a little bit, but not enough to knock away your concentration. It is now Far Eyes Go. Uh, I bet you he's just probably going to just move up. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, he's just like, move up, use my spiritual guardians, get as many people as possible. Yeah, so he can orcs. do the three orcs and the war chief. Uh, see, great use of the spell because of the raft, right? They're confined to... Oh. Of the normal orcs, two made it. And the war chief also failed. So one normal orc failed and the war chief failed. You only have three orcs and the war chief on this. Yeah. Let's assume he kills them. <laughs> uh, we can. We honest to God can because that's what's going to happen and he's going to smash. He yeah. is going to wipe away the other three orcs. The war chief will take damage. Like he's supposed to be he's going to do like an average of thirty dollars. Yeah, uh, 30, well, thirty points with each smash. So yeah, yeah. So anybody who saves. So the three orcs, Michael, just get you here. You feel like the 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 raft shift as the great ape comes closer towards you, and you can feel like the storm enveloping you. You feel like the. Uh, the static and, and the oh. ionized air and stuff, but you don't feel the the, and the only sixteen points of damage for the spiritual guardians. Uh still that's kills one and then he could smash the other two. Right? Yeah. So so twenty four to hit on both of his attacks with his fist. Yeah. So. It's so he did smash the other two. <laughs> and if he does like more than seven points of damage, they're dead. Dude, he's so. going to do like 30 points per. I know, I know. <laughs> that, just ape shit on these orcs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, it's a fourth level spell. 
Yeah. The other two orcs on the other raft. <laughs> 32 on the first smash. <laughs> They're all dead on this raft, is what I'm texting him. Yeah, yeah. War chief only, and two on the other raft. And to the two on the other raft, one of them is very hurt from, he was like the first one to get hurt. Oh, only 19 on a second hit. Dead, dead. Dead, dead. <laughs> All right. That was far, all right? Yeah. Yeah. So he kills the other three orcs and does damage to the war chief. Uh, after far, I, it goes silence. Silence. The war chief is still up, but but under pressure by uh, well, <laughs> everything. <laughs> I think it's fairly obvious what I'm going to do. I'm going to shoot him again. Okay. Turn him into a pink cushion. Shoot him again. Huh. Well, what do you know? I got the same as last time. 18 plus 6, 24. Roll your damage, 3d10. 1, 2, 3... Again, similar enough. Seven, nine, and a one. It's about 17. Wow. That's weird. It's okay. the exact same numbers. Yeah. It's like Groundhog's Day. Okay, good. You fire and you hit him again. Another one. And this time he almost stumbles down to the ground. He almost takes a knee. The <gasps> pressure is... Is is on. After you goes Nicodemus. Um, is the, uh, <laughs> the orc chief is not dead, right? No. Make but... a saving for orc chief as the champagne cork smacked in his face. <laughs> when we went on a road trip, he packed his roll around. He fails. <laughs> Uh, clearing 2d12. <laughs> oh, well, that's only eight points of necrotic damage. Your cork manifests. <laughs> and do your uh, weapon, too, your spiritual weapon. Uh, yeah, and then um, if he's still up, I'm going to smash him with the champagne bottle, yeah. which would yeah. be a 19 to hit. That hits. And that would be a total of 11 points of force damage. Wow. Oh, wow. wow. After Nicodemus, it goes orcs. The two orcs throw their javelins. <laughs> the balloon is very perforated and the cultists are bringing it down to the river surface as they load the uh, gobble or not gobble gobble can take his shot gobble's taking a shot uh, Gabo. Oh, Gabo with a 20 to hit and, and not a natural point. Yeah, so. yeah. Roll the damage. Points of piercing damage. Wow. Okay. And that was like a great two. Yeah. He's like Darth Vader. He's just on his feet. He just. Uh. After Gobble the. Crossbow could get loaded, could get yada yada, or not the crossbow, the ballista, harpoon gun. Back up to the top of the round. The 
the I'll say that the boat they come pretty much down. The balloon is fucking well anyways, we'll talk about that later. Uh NPCs are done. Uh Garl, you may go. Garl will go ahead and try the same on the uh on the war chief. Uh, throwing curses at him, saying that he's no better than a mm -hmm. lowly kobold, and um, then <laughs> and then he'll yeah. shoot. He'll shoot for uh, that's eleven. Uh, eleven to uh, yeah, eleven to hit. That uh, glances off of his uh, uh, bulkily armored and furred. Man, body. This roller ain't doing me a lot of justice today, but that's the way it is. And then he'll he'll go ahead and uh, hide again. Okay. But now there it did. I would rather had that before. That's a gosh dog. That's a twenty-seven. <laughs> Michael. He raises his axe over his head. Looks at you. At the beginning of his turn, make a saving throw since he's still in the uh, spiritual guardian's aura. Oh, then do you know what? He, he, okay, yeah. He failed. <laughs> How many hit points does he have left? Uh, enough, enough where I want him to move out. Uh -huh. And he throws his axe into the river. Far. Far than you could imagine throwing a great axe. He hurls it into the river. And he just screams in frustration. But he no longer was to fight. He's... He's... That... Uh, yeah. He's done. He Order your men to stop attacking. Throw down yeah. their weapon. He literally just is howling in frustration, you, but you could tell that he's like has no more fight in him. Mm -hmm. So essentially, we are out of initiative, and you guys could see that the that the ship. Well, you guys are on the ship, and you guys see this, and you hear him roar, and you feel the hull of the ship hit the surface of the water, and you also feel overhead. As a balloon deflates, and all the rigging and the balloon you did drapes, not have to be drapes <laughs> over the entire ship as it deflates. Your ship has lost its flight ability for now. The balloon's been been fucked. Oh boy, we're gonna have to fix this. But the orc has given up. There's only him and two live orcs on the other raft. That they're not attacking anymore. Well, they I'm brought the ship. They brought the ship down, and he's given up. Yeah, they'll be a helping the, repair everything. The three prisoners are on their knees, kind of hugging and sobbing, and like we're saved and whatnot. And once the orc war chief starts, stops screaming, you see his head and shoulders just slump as he stands, breathing heavy, recovering from the combat. We're out of initiative. The boat slowly drifts closer to the rafts. Things are quieter. No more racket of... Far Eye is still sizzling in the storm in a form. Carl will say, Bring my brides aboard now. <laughs> that's a bit presumptuous. Oh, that's Carl. <laughs> is what you would like to scream, but literally the balloon is deflated, draped over, and the yeah. the balloon is like is like like you said, feels like 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 dragon hide or yeah. something. It's like a heavy, uh, very durable leather, and it's just there's a ship on the river, and then the 
deflated balloon over top, just like the very point of the bow is kind of sticking out in the end. I mean, it doesn't even have a mast. You could just see the shape of the furnace, which, you know, is like closed down so it doesn't catch the balloon on fire and it's just awkward. The cultists are like pulling balloon up out of the water and the rigging out of the water onto the deck of the ship. Uh, all hands on deck have been called. So the other cultists are coming up from the top, but they, even they have a hard time pushing the, pushing the hatch open at first because of the weight of the deflated balloon that's draped over the hull of the ship. Michael, you're there. On this barge with the three captives, far eye, a bunch of fish, and a beaten orc war chief. The other raft drifts silently alongside with the two orcs keeping it from getting drifting away, pushing. Anything you'd like to say or do? Anyone, anyone would like to say? Or we do? need to do something about the Yorks. Like, first and foremost. Has anyone got any ideas? You're very quiet, Michael. You're very there in the background. I can almost yeah. hear you. Sorry. That's all right. Oh, there you are. I, I had the phone turn around the opposite way. Uh, right. make, transfer everything up onto the ship, all the loot, all the frozen fish, everything like that. Make sure the orcs are well are searched and weapons taken away, and uh, trust up. Some, like, yeah. Trust up and left where on the barge to float down the river. Maybe. Uh, maybe we should uh, like tow them by the boat. You know, I'm sure somebody would. Like to use them for something somewhere. That's the point. Darl would like to take all the uh, orc tusks out, out of out of their mouths to use for uh, implements. And there are thirteen dead orcs. Uh, he'll he'd take fifteen sets of. Uh, Orc tusk. <laughs> <laughs> They'll make good scrimshaw practice and uh, nice necklaces and, and things like that in his mind. Maybe even if one's big enough, a spoon or a spork. About the right. Why is it you river pirates attacked us? He says to Nicodemus after recovering his breath and his his composure, his bloodshot eyes and the red foam that he's wiped off of his face, but the blood smeared on his face and his arm, his glove. Why is it you attacked us? What do you mean by river pirates? You come out of the sky, out of nowhere, swoop down, kill all my men, take our plunder, our treasure. One man. And you One were just transporting those wonder. people, I guess. Only doing as I'm told. Who told you? God. God. Okay. Thank you. Now we're talking. Excellent. Uh, we'd like to meet. You're going to take us there. 
and in yeah. in price for your life and letting you live and letting you go afterwards along with your remaining companions you're going to take us and sneak us in the gah the guard tower deliver. will see anything approaching from a mile that's fine they can see us approaching they're expecting you right he nods. we can hide we can, everybody can hide under some fish to where they can't see anything other than what you bring in. And I will be there right over your shoulder, looking like an orc, making sure that you behave yourself. And if you get us in, we will let you go. If you don't, well, we can't exactly have orcs roaming around marauding now, can we? Decisions, decisions, life or death, I know, must suck. My. Pact with God is not worth my life. No, it's not. So you're going to go with us, right? He nods. It's a good orc. By the way, does anybody have Zone of Truth? I like the Zone of Truth this. <laughs> oh, okay. I got my Zone of Truth. And I whip out, uh, whip over his uh, crossbow. I have to be excused for a bio, you guys. Sorry. But, uh, We'll get some of this role playing done and then we'll wrap it up here soon. All right. So anything that you guys want to ask or role play or questions or whatever, uh, I'll come back and we'll deal with that and then we'll wrap it up so that Kath can go and Michael can go have his fucking poutine or whatever he's going to have. Trivia night. Oh, uh, order put poutine. No, I don't know. Hold on, I'll be right back. Yes, indeed. Poutine give you oh, a trivia hug. night. So you know, beers and trivia. What silence about poutine? Doesn't it give you a heart attack? Oh, life does that. Mm, maybe it was just that uh, Muppet sketch with the Swedish chef. Yeah, it could be. But uh, Life if you recall, that. they were actually bringing prisoners, so they can bring prisoners. We could do the whole Wookiee prisoner thing to get in. We have the orcs. We have three orcs and me as an orc. I can disguise self. And uh, you all can be our prisoners. And we just, you know, we can have a goblin also underling with us. They won't think twice about it. And we just roll up in there with this stuff, and they'll take us straight to God. Suck the goblins, nah. Yeah, and then <laughs> you remember the first time I ever played D and D with you. The first and only time we played D and D with you, we found the goblin, and the DM told us that the goblin had his tongue cut off. And you're like, "Cool, I stick my dick in his mouth." <laughs> Sorry, y'all had to hear that, but this is a schmuck that I'm hanging out with playing. Come on, it was creative. Yeah, that was very creative. We didn't say he didn't have any teeth, dude. We said he. <laughs> You didn't have any oh, man. I'm just, you know, is that what your first response is? Okay, there's a goblin prisoner with his tongue cut. I'd like to stick my dick in his mouth. <laughs> uh, okay. how, many, how many shots did he have before he said that? He was sober. Oh, that's even worse. <laughs> is, is, is that not something a gay man would do? I'm just saying. I'm not. I'm not saying it's either good or bad or anything, but I'm just saying, wouldn't you begin to wonder about a dude's sexuality who wants to stick their <laughs> in a goblin's mouth? You'd be like, dude, this goes beyond gay and straight. This is not some weird bestiality type. To me, it's, it, it would make me question it would make me question all his judgments. It's like a fucking unicorn. It's like saying you're fucking unicorn that don't exist. Have you not ever watched Lord of the Rings and know what goblins <laughs> Uh, are they men though specifically they're not men but they are humanoid okay yeah, yeah. they do have arms and they're legs 
anthropomorphic. Ooh, check out the big brain on Grant. That's right, Grant. They're anthropomorphic. <laughs> Don't forget their big tusk. <laughs> I mean, he was pretty smart. He's got his, he's got, he's got his masters in history. So, you know. I was gonna rub it in and tell me I got it. You did. I was the bottom test. I got it. You myself. did. You did. Yeah, yeah. So, what do you think? Is that that a good idea? We just, um, yeah, kind of like what I'm doing, except instead of D and D, you were, you know, having. <laughs> Oh, this is the uh, city of Richmond. Uh, uh, meeting. Commit, yeah, the commissioner's meeting on Tuesday night, yeah. the sixth. Same thing. Maria does it her same thing at the same time. At a pub trivia. Yeah. Yeah, man. The commissioner's meeting really interferes with our beer drinking and trivia night. You know. I <laughs> know. As my first order of city commissioner, I suggest we move the commissioner's meeting away from. Trivia pub night. <laughs> Sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Me and Jeremy are going to change buddy. Uh, so what, what do you all think about that idea? Using these orcs and just hiding, or either prisoners or hiding you in the mound of frozen fish and just, you know, getting taken directly to God? Yeah, sounds pretty good. But and then we do found them when you think about it. Yeah, and then we do what we do. God dead. Fucking conk crunk. Conk found. We're out. Somehow I get the feeling it's going to be a lot more complicated than that. Probably, but you know, that's when we go to plan B. What's up, buddy? How are you? Good. How are you doing, man? What's that? Get him drunk? Uh, I don't know, but nothing sounds more official than a plan B. Well, he's pretty big in his greed, so I think alcohol would be a good way to do it. Yeah, I think so, too. What exactly was your plan A? Ah, we sneak in as the Wookiee uh, prisoner trick. Uh, get directly to God. Kill her. Take the con. Two chili cheese dogs. And another pitcher. All right, I'm back. All right. So yeah, I would say decision. that I would say you guys pretty like you, you guys are in the situation. You guys are like talking to him. He's like willing to go. Uh, you guys got like the 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 rafts and the ship all kind of at rate as of now. The other two orcs that are alive are not like. I mean. They know it's surrender time, right? Like, they're not, whatever. The three captives um, are, like, maybe having a bite to eat and some water, uh, trying to uh, recover any uh, fatigue or wounds and that type of stuff. The cultists overlooking the balloon give you the word that the balloon has been destroyed. Not, it is irreparable. It will have to be replaced in order to regain flight. The orc says the watchtower. Uh, Grudhog is basically, imagine, a giant beaver dam. That explains why the river is so swollen. Uh, imagine a giant, giant-sized river dam with basically like, uh, 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 what you call it? Uh, like a house. Uh, what do they always call it in like the giants? Giants. Giant term for a house. What do they call? A steading. They always call it a giant steading. There's a steading built atop with a watchtower. There are. Uh, Bob goblins. It's going to get loud here. So that's I'm okay. Drop out, okay. Okay. I'm sorry. And uh, that's it. He will give you description. And we'll call it there. Done. Bada boom, bada bing. All right. Okay. Because you guys will be doing the approach. Yeah. Disguised 
as the orcs. And we'll do a little, yeah, we can do a little bit of role play and stuff as you guys do the approach. But yeah, he's not willing to fucking die for her. And no. Any questions? No. Anything no, at I'm all good. Like to say? All right. Well, class Every dismissed. Every day I just need to get a bed. Class dismissed. Ka. Everyone stay safe and you wear your part. masks. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I still just don't fucking go anywhere. That's a good policy. I, I don't. Like, I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't fucking work, so. I don't go anywhere. I don't go shopping. I don't drive. I'm blind. I don't drive, right? That's, right? That's the thing. My life has changed very fucking little, and it's very sad to show you how fucking... Thank you.